Lisa Maynard, Supervisor of Special Education Programs, Middle School, Pemberton Township Schools. Module 8, Interventions and Strategies. What it is. Dyslexia is a lifelong language processing difficulty that is neurobiological in origin. Facts about dyslexia. It affects at least one out of five children in the United States. Affects as many girls as boys. Early intervention is essential and it is due to difficulty in processing language. Children are born with dyslexia and do not outgrow it. Of children who display reading problems in first grade, 74% will be struggling readers in ninth grade and into adulthood unless they receive informed and explicit instruction in phonemic awareness. Struggling readers must be provided highly structured programs that explicitly teach how to apply speech sounds to print. Provide structured, explicit, direct instruction. Provide multi-sensory structured language instruction. Let the child see it, hear it, say it, and touch it. Provide greater intensity of instruction, increased frequency and duration of instruction, and use research-based instruction in the five components of reading, which are phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension, as well as writing and spelling. Have patience, yet high expectations. Break work into smaller chunks. Focus the child on your lips when pronouncing words or listening for sounds. Give more time and patience to finishing work. Give additional testing time and provide a quiet work area. Content training. The five critical components of reading identified by the National Reading Panel Research are phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Each is necessary, but none is sufficient by itself to learn to read. Looking at the triangle, which represents the phonological awareness continuum, you get an idea of where a child should be developed in their language. The ages are to the right on the triangle. We have ages 3 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8. And in each of these areas, you can see what the child should be able to do with language. When we look at the curriculum, we have three tiers of instruction. Tier 1, which is a core classroom instruction, Tier 2, which is strategic instruction, and Tier 3, which is intensive instruction. Looking at this triangle, you can see the three tiers of instruction more clearly delineated. In Tier 1, you have whole group reading modeled in a literacy block. It's done by the classroom teacher, and this addresses all students in the classroom. There are times that small groups are done for explicit teaching. In Tier 2 is much more often taught in small group differentiated, but it is still within the literacy block and often conducted by intervention staff. Tier 3 is small group or one-to-one -one intensive specialized instruction. This goes beyond the normal block and is done by intervention staff. Intervention instruction should be explicit and systematic. It should be direct instruction as it is presented in the teacher editions of each intervention program used. You need to follow the program sequence. Pace so skills taught materials are covered thoroughly by the end of the year. What does the research indicate? The problems of students with dyslexia most commonly stem from difficulty in processing speech sounds with words and making connections between sounds and their written symbols. There is a strong relationship between phonological awareness and the ability to read well. Deficits in this area that appear in early grades are predictive of difficulties in learning to read. With appropriate early intervention, 75 to 90 percent of students who are at risk readers can overcome many of their difficulties and increase reading skills to an average level.
Starting treatment when a child is young can improve difficulties with reading in the first years of school. Research has found that early interventions are effective in achieving long-term improvements in their reading and writing. However, reading will likely never be easy for a person with dyslexia. What are the key areas of difficulty? Primary weaknesses associated with dyslexia are poor decoding of individual words, word attack, and word recognition skills, slow, inaccurate oral reading, poor reading fluency, spelling difficulties, poor encoding skills, short-term memory and sequencing difficulties, poor metacognitive skills, monitoring one's own thinking and learning processes, low self-esteem. While there is no cure for dyslexia, there is a range of interventions that can help students with dyslexia with reading and writing. The amount and type of intervention necessary will depend on the severity of dyslexia. A combination of instructional methods designed to meet individual needs is the most effective way to treat students with dyslexia. What are the key instructional requirements? Research validated instruction that is direct and explicit. Each skill, rule of language, and strategy for reading and spelling words must be taught clearly and directly. It must be systematic and structured. Instruction follows a systematic scope and sequence of skills, starting at a beginning level to ensure mastery of foundational skills and filling in gaps in a student's repertoire of skills. Multisensory. It uses techniques that incorporate a combination of auditory, visual, and tactile kinesthetic input. Cumulative. Skill instruction and small amounts of new information must be taught in steps with constant review and practice. What are the key instructional requirements? Explicit teaching of reading and writing with greater intensity of instruction than is required for most students, instruction provided either one-to-one -one or in small groups of students at the same skill level, ongoing assessment, informal and formal, and careful monitoring of progress. New skill sets and concepts that are broken into small, clear steps and repeatedly practiced with immediate feedback and reinforcement. Effective reading instruction for students with reading difficulties. Direct instruction must be provided in the following areas at the appropriate level of difficulty and with substantial amounts of practice so students can experience frequent success. Phonemic awareness, alphabet knowledge, concepts of print, oral language development, sight word vocabulary, phonics and decoding, letter formation and spelling, fluency, vocabulary knowledge, and comprehension. Phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness teaches students how to recognize and identify phonemes or sounds in spoken words. It is the ability to recognize, identify, and manipulate individual speech sounds. It helps students to recognize that even very short words, such as hat, are actually made up of three phonemes, the H, the A, and the T. Another part of phonetic awareness involves understanding you can manipulate phonemes to change words, such as changing the H to a C to create the word cat. Students must also acquire the ability to recognize and produce a rhyme, segment sounds, and blend sounds. If a student lacks phonemic awareness then, expose them to nursery rhymes, poems, and chants with much rhythm and rhyme. Provide opportunities for repeated listening to songs, poems, and chants. Practice choral reading of familiar song lyrics, poems, chants, and refrains. Use alliterative literature to help students develop the concept of beginning sounds. If a student lacks phonemic awareness, then play Guess My Word, segmenting sounds of a single syllable word. Use Elkonin sound boxes and the sounds of a single syllable word. 
the student slides a chip or a letter into each cell of the Elkonin box. The example shows an Elkonin box for the word sheep, which consists of three phonemes, the SH, the double E, and the P. If a student lacks phonemic awareness, then clap the rhythm of first and last names and in words to hear syllables. Play I spy something that rhymes with. Have students clap each time they hear a rhyming word. When students know the text well, pause before each rhyming word to allow students an opportunity to supply the word. Use picture cards or sets of items for initial or final sound isolation. Alphabet knowledge. Alphabet knowledge is the ability to recognize and name the letters of the alphabet. This ability appears to be the second most important instructional factor in learning to read. Alphabet knowledge is highly correlated with and usually predictive of later reading success. Intervention may be needed if the student is unable to recognize the letters of the alphabet when shown the letters, is unable to point to the letters of the alphabet, or is unable to match uppercase and lowercase letters. If a student lacks alphabet knowledge, then practice letter recognition tasks with a variety of fonts, sizes, or mediums. Match upper and lowercase letter pairs. Create scavenger hunts, locating and tagging letters within known text or around the classroom. Read a wide variety of alphabet books to help students recognize the letters and learn the sequence of the alphabet. Prepare a blank book and label the pages with the letters of the alphabet. Have students cut out letters from cereal boxes, catalogs, magazines, and newspapers, and then paste. Practice one-to-one -one pointing while reading the alphabet, chunking letter groups one at a time. A, B, C, D, then E, F, G, H. If a student lacks alphabet knowledge, then create a collection of materials to encourage students to freely explore the alphabet, including letter stamps, flashcards, dry erase boards, cereal boxes, catalogs, magazines, and newspapers. Use Alpha Friends on Think Central. Students will find this entertaining and it provides a way for them to learn the letters in context. When teaching the alphabet, be sure that it appears on a chart where students can see it constantly, preferably at eye level. Using just a few letters at a time, work with students until they can instantly tell you which letter comes before or after any other letter. Place a thin layer of salt or fine sand in the bottom of a shoebox lid and have students trace letters with their fingers in the sand or salt. If a student lacks alphabet knowledge, then locate letter shapes found in the environment. Present a letter and discuss its characteristic shape. A sender, such as the letter H, or a D sender, such as the letter P. Play computer games focusing on letter recognition. Sort magnetic letters or letter tiles by physical attributes, color, circles, lines. Create activities with letter puzzles, sandpaper letters, shaving cream, clay, and wiki sticks. Use the word wall to read and point to the letter sequences in a student's name and in sight words. Concepts about print. What are concepts about print? It is the early understanding of print. Can the student identify where to start reading and where to go next, indicating they know about return sweep? When asked to point while the teacher reads, can the student slide their finger along the line of print, moving left to right and return to the left margin? Understanding directionality. Can a student match one spoken word with one written word? Can a student locate known letters and find a word that starts with a specific letter? Can the student distinguish between letter features when they are embedded in words? Is the student familiar with print terminology such as letter, word, uppercase, lowercase, period, question mark, etc.? If a student does not demonstrate routine left-to-right directionality, then explicitly model one-to-one -one pointing while reading aloud 
thinking aloud for this return sweep. Left page before right page and looking left to right across new words. Ask the student to point to where the reader should start to read. Using big books or in large poems to demonstrate left to right reading. Arrange magnetic letters in ABC order, varying the lines of print in vertical order. Create a board game where the pawns move along a path from left to right and top to bottom. If a student does not demonstrate routine left to right directionality, then have the student read the alphabet chart with a pointer moving from left to right. Have the student drop pennies or counters into an egg carton from left to right. Use a green start dot at the beginning and a red stop dot at the end. Have the student locate or highlight the first letter of a word in a variety of texts. Have the student point one to one while the teacher points above the text. If a student does not routinely demonstrate one to one matching, then Consider the font size, spacing, and placement of text when selecting books. Prompt for voice text matching. Did your voice match the words you see? Did you have enough words on that page to match the words you said? You said, repeat how the student read as you point. That didn't match. Read it again and make your voice match the words. Have the student point to and name objects and or known words. Have the student use an extended pointer, a drinking straw, chopstick. Have the student use an extended pointer, a drinking straw, or chopstick. Generate a short sentence with a student. Cut apart the words and have the student reassemble. Generate a short dictation by the student and reread with one-to-one -one pointing. If a student is unfamiliar with print terminology, then... Have the student construct his or her name with magnetic letters. Explain the difference between a letter and a word. After shared reading, have the student frame letters and words. Provide a sentence strip of a short dictated sentence and have the student count the letters and words. Have the student highlight specific items, periods, spaces, capital letters, tall letters, in a short poem. Have the student discriminate between two words beginning with the same sound, a long word and a short word, by matching the picture. Bat, banana, or hat, hippopotamus. Oral language development. Language plays a critical role in learning. All children come to school with an oral language system that does not precisely match written language. Some children have had broader experiences as well as opportunities to hear written language. Hearing conversation every day is essential. As children hear new vocabulary, they can incorporate it into their own repertoire. Some children may be making good progress in learning about and using language, and yet not realize how to use this language as a resource when reading. Language knowledge is one of the most important tools children can have. If a student lacks background knowledge and expressive language for common objects and concepts, then respond and converse with the student in complete sentences. Provide opportunities for dramatic play in small groups using themes such as store, bus, home. Provide many opportunities for time at the listening workstation. Read aloud books with playful refrains for shared reading. Allow for buddy reading of shared books and poems that have been read aloud frequently in shared reading. Create simple caption books around such topics as food, recess, friends, school, and tools labeling the nouns. If a student lacks background knowledge and expressive language for common objects and concepts, then read and talk about books, characters, expressions of characters, details in the pictures, actions, predictions from pictures, problems and solutions, and areas of interest or connections. Facilitate conversations about the details of field trips by taking photos and commenting on discoveries as well as feelings. 
encourage participation in show and tell. Read, think, and talk about different versions of the same story. Routinely provide turn and talk opportunities for students to talk about their learning.